burning building, an evil genius. Helpless citizens watch on in horror. What will happen? And then suddenly, something in the distance. What is it? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's a superhero. In times of crisis, confusion and fear, the superhero story offers escapism and the hope that good will triumph over evil and someone else will save the day. But as we all know, reality is not that simple and the villains that we face in the real world aren't usually evil geniuses. They're day-to-day -day things, like having that difficult conversation with a colleague. They're big, existential things, like climate change. Or they're those quiet moments of grief that we all eventually face, such as losing a loved one. When we face things in the real world that feel overwhelming, it seems like a superhero simply isn't coming. But I have a secret to share. Superheroes walk amongst us. You may not notice them at first because they're often in disguise, but they do exist and they're closer than you might think. In fact, I can sense around 117 in this very room. How do I have this superhero sensor, you might ask? Well, I used to be a superhero. I know, it's hard to believe, but I used to be a cape-wearing, comes-from-outer-space superhero. I wasn't born that way. My origin story starts with me as a young, 20-year-old woman who was unsure of who I was. My story crosses continents, and it includes magic and loss and a lot of laughter. My story includes seeing many others around me, unlocking their true superhero natures as well, not always by choice, but often out of necessity. You see, for four years, I worked with children and families in hospitals, community clinics, mental health wards, and palliative care hospices. And it was my job to dress up as a superhero every day and bring just a little bit of escapism and hope to some pretty serious situations. And through this work, I learned that being a superhero isn't about being the fastest or the strongest or the smartest. I learned that the superheroes that we need in the real world have a different set of skills. And I learned that anybody could unlock their true superhero nature and grow through challenge by practicing three simple things. One, activate your superhero brain. Whilst it would have been great to come here today and tell you about how I learned how to fly or maybe shoot lasers from my eyes, I learned a much more useful skill that I think all superheroes should hone first, how to activate my superhero brain. I remember one day I was called in at the last minute to support a five-year-old girl during a particularly painful procedure, and I'd found myself without my bag of tricks that I'd usually bring, so maybe a musical instrument or some bubbles or some games. It was just me. So I walked in and it was this overwhelming environment of bright lights and beeping machines and sharp needles. And I started to think, what can I bring here? A superhero with no bag of super gadgets. I was so caught up in my own ego and trying to throw more at the situation that I disconnected from the present moment. And I looked around the room and I spotted the little girl in the middle of it all and the reason why we were all there. And she looked really scared. And I realized that she didn't need a singing, dancing entertainer. She needed a superhero. So I activated my superhero brain. I calmed my breath and I practiced shining a warm, present energy. She caught my eye and she started activating her superhero brain too. And the procedure didn't get less painful and the environment didn't get less overwhelming, but we breathed and we calmed and we got through it together. 
This power of activating my superhero brain served me well beyond my superhero days, and especially as a first-time manager of 30 people at that very same hospital. When challenges arose, which they inevitably do when you're managing people, I activated my superhero brain. And whatever came up, whether that was something surprising or big emotions or perhaps my own defensiveness, I accepted it, I was present with it, and I learnt through it with curiosity. And from this, I learned that sometimes activating your superhero brain and being present with what is, is all that's needed to unlock the answer. And sometimes it isn't. Number two, create a superhero squad. In 2018, myself and two of my superhero colleagues were delivering our services to children's palliative care hospices in England, Scotland and Wales. And I remember our first visit to a hospice. We went around and we were creating balloon animals for each child and we wanted to ask them what colour they wanted. But we quickly realised that due to the progression of their conditions, many of the children didn't communicate verbally or physically with a point or a nod. So we just ended up choosing a colour for them, which doesn't really seem like a big deal, except the whole ethos of our work was about giving choice to children in environments where so much of that choice had been taken away. So I knew that we could do better. I reached out to an occupational therapist and I asked for help. She explained that we could simply hold up two different options and let the child choose with their eyes. Something so simple, so useful, and something that I never would have thought of on my own. And from this and so many other situations like it, I learned that just relying on our own experience of the world, our own expertise, and just being present isn't all that's needed. Sometimes we need a sidekick or a whole superhero squad. Apart from not having all of the answers ourselves, humans aren't meant to go it alone. So whether that means finding a mentor or finding a community, a superhero should always find ways to work alongside other superheroes. Now, I mentioned that I have this superhero sensor, but for those of us who haven't quite developed that yet, how might we spot a superhero? That's right. Number three, the superhero costume. For many of us, drawing attention to ourselves activates that little voice that says, hey, who are you to shine? But wearing a cape to work every day that literally sparkled in the sun taught me that when you shine, you encourage others to shine too. It also taught me the importance of play. This cape and the space boots and the space hat immediately caught kids' attention and said, hey, this way for fun. And while superhero costumes aren't for all of us, play is. It reduces anxiety, it allows us to see new opportunities, and it strengthens those social connections. Just the things that we need to thrive during change and uncertainty. So don't stop creating opportunities to play, both for yourself and for others, especially when things get serious. Now, I have one final secret, and it's about the superhero cape, actually. Um, it's the most important power that the superhero cape has, and that is that you can take it off a lot of people ask me if it was sad working in a children's hospital. And I think, yes. And no. And that's not really the right question because it was sad, but it was also joyful and it was absurd and it was simple and it was complex. I came to see a children's hospital like a microcosm of our world. Inside it are those quiet moments of grief, those joyful moments of love, loss, laughter, community, connection and challenge. Inside its walls are everyday humans, big and small, 
unlocking their true superhero natures to face things that are really scary and overwhelming. But being a superhero is really tough. And as many of the children and families that I worked with know too well, some villains don't get defeated. So it's important to take your cape off, to rest, to recover, to reflect, to find people and places where it's safe to be vulnerable, to let your emotions be felt, to not have all the answers and to try again anyway. Because at the end of the day, I'm not a real superhero. None of us are. We're human. Messy, everyday humans on a journey in a complex and sometimes confusing world. And yet, we are the superheroes that we have been waiting for. All we have to remember is three simple things. One, unlock your superhero brain. Two, create a superhero squad. And three, don't forget to take off your cape. And the final lesson is this. I know that we all have within us what we need to act like a superhero. I can sense it.